Hello grade 11s, in this video we'll be looking at types of reactions, acids and bases, we'll define an acid and a base, and I'll show you some basic acid-base reactions. Acids and bases are an important section in grade 11 and grade 12 chemistry. Up until this point in grade 8 or grade 9 natural sciences, you may have defined an acid as something that tastes sour, you might know that it has a pH of less than 7, then it's considered acidic, and for bases you may have learned that it tastes bitter or it has a soapy feel and has a pH value of more than 7. But in grade 11 and in grade 12, we are going to learn how to properly define an acid and a base. Yes, they have the following properties that I just mentioned, but there's a lot more to acids and bases. The first thing that I want you to notice, and I will repeat this again and again as we go through the definitions of acids and bases, is that when you consider an acid, I want you to think of H plus ions in solution. So what I say to my students all the time is that in your mind, I want you to link acids with H plus ions or H3O plus ions. I'll explain why later. And bases, I want you to link with OH minus ions. Okay, so when you think of acids, I want you to think of the hydronium ion, that is this one over here, and bases, I want you to think of the hydroxide ion. I promise you when I get to the definitions of acids and bases, this will make a lot more sense. But for now, let's go over some common acids and common bases that you can get asked in your question paper. You need to know the name, you need to know the formula, and you need to know the strength. So this is a table summarizing some of the common acids that we can ask you that you need to know. So for example, if I say hydrochloric acid in a test and I don't give you the formula, you need to know that hydrochloric acid is HCl and you need to know that it's strong. It is defined as a strong acid. You need to know sulfuric acid, H2SO4 is a strong acid. These are all the important acids. We will often also speak about acetic acid or ethanoic acid. That is the acid that you find in vinegar. There's the formula and it's a weak acid, okay? So you need to know this list, study it off by heart. And then we've got the bases. And what I want you to take note of is that I put the common names of the bases in brackets. We don't ask this very often. It's more the name, the chemical formula, the chemical name, and the associated chemical formula. And again, is it a strong base or is it a weak base? You need to know the scientific models which define acids and bases. So we get scientists, we had scientists a while ago, and our first scientist that we're gonna speak about is Arrhenius. And Arrhenius defined acids and bases in one way. Then two other scientists called Lowry and Bronsted, they built on the work of Arrhenius, later defining acids and bases in another way. And you need to be able to define an acid and a base using both of these theories. Let's start with Arrhenius and Arrhenius' theory. And Arrhenius noticed that water dissociates or splits up into hydronium ions, that's these H3O plus ions. And remember I told you to link this with acids in your brain and hydroxide ions, which I told you to link with bases in your brain. And what Arrhenius discovered is that an acid produces H3O plus or hydronium ions in an aqueous solution. So an aqueous solution is when we dissolve it in water. And bases produce hydroxide ions in an aqueous solution in water. The problem with Arrhenius' theory is that it only explains acids and bases when we dissolve it in water. So it basically only explains why an acid is an acid or why a base is a base when it is in an aqueous solution. And we know that Acids don't have to be acids and bases don't have to be bases only when we dissolve it in water. So it limited acids and bases to aqueous solutions only. And although it is a useful definition, we tend to also use the lowry bronsted definition, which is a broader definition. And the bronsted lowry or lowry bronsted definition or theory described acids and bases as follows. They said an acid is a proton donor, so it gives away a proton. And bases are proton acceptors. They accept or they take up a proton. Therefore, the reaction between an acid and a base involves the transfer of a proton. Acids give away the proton, bases accept the proton, and we call it a proton transfer or protolysis reaction. 
The Bronsted-Lowry definition is very, very important for you to know. We often ask you to describe or define an acid in terms of the Lowry-Bronsted theory. However, don't forget about Arrhenius' theory because we can ask you to define an acid and a base in terms of his theory as well. Another important thing, we say acids ionize and bases dissociate. There's a slight difference in the meaning of the word. And just to show you how the Bronsted-Lowry definition works, I have an acid, HCl. As you know, it is a strong acid. In this reaction, I'm reacting HCl with water. This is actually called ionizing with water. So ionizing with water is when we take the acid and it reacts with water. So water is involved in the chemical reaction. It is one of the reactants. Remember, Acids are defined as proton donors, which means the acid should give away an H+. So what's going to happen is the acid is going to give away an H+. Remember, an H+, is a proton. The definition says acids are proton donors donors and a proton if i didn't emphasize that earlier a proton is an h plus ion protons are positive protons h plus positive a positive hydrogen a hydrogen ion if you will so essentially what is happening over here is my acid is the proton donor it is giving away this proton to h2o which is my base now i need you to think very carefully about what happens HCl was a neutral compound. You see it has no charges over here. It's just HCl. When it gives away a positive, if you're neutral and you give away a positive, you become a negative. That is why HCl becomes Cl minus. The H is gone. It was neutral. It now becomes negative. Okay. That is what happened to the acid. It became Cl minus. Now, what about the base? The base was H2O. The base, remember, is a proton acceptor. It accepts that H plus to become H3O plus. So it goes from something that is neutral, as you can see here, H2O is neutral, because it gained a positive, it gained a proton, it's going to now have a charge of plus, a positive charge. Just to elaborate why we say acids ionize and bases dissociate, very similar, as you can see here, ionization and dissociation are both described as producing ions in solution. But the reason why we say acids ionize is because acids are covalently bonded compounds. And I hope that you remember from grade 10, also from last term, that covalent compounds, they involve a non-metal bonding with a non-metal. Okay? They share electrons. And when we have compounds that are covalently bonded, we say that they ionize in solution or in water. So that means that the acid reacts with water. As you can see here, water is one of the reactants. It's part of the chemical equation. So water is included here as a reactant. We can contrast that with dissociation. Bases dissociate, okay, with the exception of ammonia, Okay, that's because ammonia is a covalent base, but we will go through that at another stage. So the covalent base, that one actually ionizes, so it's our one exception, but most bases dissociate. And dissociation happens for ionic compounds. Remember, ionic compounds is a metal and a non-metal. They transfer electrons. And what ionic compounds do when we dissolve them in water is that they break the ions, break apart. Okay, so this is what essentially happens if we dissociate NaOH, dissociation. As you can see, the H2O is written on top of the arrow over here to show that dissociation is taking place. It's different to the acids where we actually say HCl plus H2O. So here the H2O is part of the chemical equation. It's reacting with the acid. Here the H2O is drawn on the arrow, basically just to show that the base is going to dissociate or break up or dissolve in water, and it breaks into its ions. Now I knew that it's Na+, because sodium is in the first group of the periodic table. It has a charge of plus one. You need to remember from naming that the hydroxide ion OH has a charge of minus one. That's just something you need to know. That's why it would break up into those ions. And the reason why hydronium ions form when we speak about acids is because remember, acids are proton donors. So acids give away an H+. That H+, joins up with the H2O, and that's where the hydronium ion comes from. 
So let's do another example just so I can make sure you understand the Lowry Bronsted definition of an acid or a base. So this one over here is nitric acid. So this is an acid. I'm telling it reacts with the base. Pause and see if you can try it. Remember, acids are proton donors. So this is going to donate an H plus to the base. Bases are proton acceptors. What happens is that this over here loses its H. So it's going to become NO3 because remember the H is being donated. It was neutral. Okay, it had no charge. It's losing a positive. If you lose a positive, you become negative. Okay, then the base accepted that hydrogen. So instead of H2, it's now going to be H3. Oh, it was neutral, it gained a positive, it gained a proton, so this is going to be H3O+. Plus. And how would you show these bases dissociating? Remember, bases dissociate in water, you draw the H2O on top of the arrow like that. What it means is that these break up into its ions. So, the potassium ion is K+, plus, and the hydroxide ion, as I just mentioned, is OH-, minus. just like that, that's it. Over here, for calcium hydroxide, this one's a little bit more tricky. Calcium is in the second group on the periodic table. So if you look at your periodic table, remember it's ordered like this. And remember, in your first group, you have metals like sodium and potassium and lithium. In your second one, you have calcium and magnesium and so on. Because calcium is in the second group, okay, the second column, it has a charge of plus two. So it's going to be Ca... 2 plus, plus, remember the hydroxide ion has a charge of minus. And I know what you're thinking. I know you're probably thinking, but ma'am, there's a 2 there. What that means is that there's just going to be 2 hydroxide ions. The reason why there's 2 is because overall the charges must give me 0. So remember when we did naming, we did this. How we got this name to start with is we said calcium is a charge of plus 2. And hydroxide has a charge of minus one, which means for every one calcium atom, I need two hydroxide ions. That's why it's CaOH2. Okay, so there's two hydroxide ions, so big two, representing that there's two of these for every one of these. I hope that makes sense over there. Now, remember we said that acids ionize, so they react with water, and bases dissociate, so they break up in water. We put the water on the arrow. But I said that that is because bases are generally ionic substances. But we have an exception, ammonia, NH3. Ammonia is not ionic. Okay, remember ionic is metal and non-metal. Ammonia is a non-metal and a non-metal. So hydrogen and nitrogen are both non-metal, which means it doesn't dissociate. It's not ionic. It doesn't consist of ions. It is a covalent molecule, which means it ionizes in water. So this is what the reaction looks like. And I could ask you to complete this reaction for me. So we've got ammonia, which we said is a weak base. And in this case, it's reacting with water. But water is now my acid. Now, you might be thinking, ma'am, earlier on, water was a base. Now it's an acid. What's going on? Water can act as an acid or a base depending on what it's reacting with. Water is what we call an ampholite, and I'll deal with that in another video. But in this reaction, NH3, ammonia is my base, water is my acid. As you know, acids are proton donors. So in this case, H2O is going to lose its H+. It's going to donate it to the base. Now, let's start with the acid. This was H2O. Now it's going to be just one H and one O. That looks weird. If you see that, you should be like, mm, ma'am, no, I don't think so. We write it with the oxygen first and then the hydrogen. Okay, but it's the same thing. It had one oxygen. It still has one oxygen. Yeah, it had two hydrogens, but then it lost one. Remember, it donated a proton. So it's just one hydrogen. This was neutral. In other words, it did not have a charge. It's neutral. It's not positive. It's not negative. But when it loses a positive, remember when you lose a positive, you become negative. So this is going to be OH minus, and that's called the hydroxide ion. And then NH3, it gained bases or proton acceptors. It accepts this proton. So it's no longer NH3. It's NH4. 
but it's accepting a proton which has a positive charge so it's NH4 plus and that is what this reaction looks like and as you can see over here I said that NH3 is a base it accepts the proton H2O is an acid it donates the proton I hope that this lesson was helpful please join me in more lessons in this playlist and subscribe if you haven't yet bye everyone